Hey, Motor Warriors. Uh, sometime back, uh, when Trump was still president, there was two guys that were near me. I won't get into all the details. Uh, one of them was white, one of them was black. I didn't know either of them. But the white guy was wearing a Trump hat. And the, the black guy looked at him and he said that he was a racist and all that. And the guy said, why? And he said, because Trump's a racist. Uh, yeah, right. You know? And uh, so the black guy was saying about how that he always votes Democrats because all black people vote Democrats. Well, I was trying to mind my own business, but when I heard that, I interrupted and said, hey, listen, you know, I have friends that are black that don't vote for Democrats because they realize, you know, what this party has become. And the guy told me that I was a racist just for saying that I had black friends. How stupid is that? The guys don't know me. Well, the... What happened to me when I lived in southern Louisiana, uh, that I'm about to share with you, I kind of mentioned in a comment to Rich and Cake from Boots and Jeans Riders. Uh, they're really good people. I'll, I'll put a link in their, to their channel here, and I hope you go subscribe to them. They're great folks. And they said that they'd like to hear some of the things that I experienced when I lived down in southern Louisiana. So, you know, here we are. But anyway, when I lived in southern Louisiana, uh, my best friend happened to be a black guy. We worked offshore together. Uh, we went and did everything together. Back then, I used to drink. That was a long time ago. I don't. I haven't drank in like you know, thirty-seven or eight years or something like that. But anyway, uh, every time we were on land, we worked offshore, like I said. But every time we were on land, we'd get together, his girlfriend and my girlfriend, and we'd go, you know, do stuff together. Well. One time, him, him and I were going to go play frisbee and stuff, go hang out at Girard Park. If you're familiar with Lafayette, Louisiana, you know what I'm talking about. He, he set up a place saying, hey, let's meet at a grocery store parking lot. And I said, man, I'm not sure where that is. And then he, he told me about some bar that was right near there. And I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, I think I know what you're talking about. I'd never been there before or anything, but I, I remember passing it. So we met in that area, and I said, hey, man, let's go in. It's hot out. Let's go in and have a couple of beers and play some pool and then we'll go to the park and he's like i can't go in there and i said what do you mean you can't go in there and he said man i can't go in there it's a it's a white bar it's a white redneck bar i can't go in there well in tennessee i'd never heard of such a thing as a, a white or black bar you know and i said oh man you know it's cool it's afternoon it's not a big deal just come on in and i thought he was kind of like joking so we went in, and right as you go in, it takes a little bit because it's kind of dimly lit in there. You know how it is. You're outside in the sun, and you go inside, and it's dark, and, you know, the light's dim, and you can't hardly see. One day, I walked in, and there was the light over the pool table shortly, you know, right as you're kind of like coming in the door. And so back then, pool tables, you know, were a dime. So I handed Danny, that was my friend Danny Washington, I handed Danny a dime, and he kind of like pinched it between his thumb and finger, and then kind of like raised his hand and held up his other hand with his palm open and kind of like made this gesture of like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, I'll pay for the first game and I'll go get the beers, maybe a couple shots, Jack Daniels. And then, you know, we'll, whoever loses will pay for the next round or the next game or whatever. And he's like, all right, I don't think we're going to be playing pool though. And he stood there with that dime in his hand and his other hand palm open and up kind of like chest high and so I go up to the bar and the only ones besides us that were in the bar was some dumb rednecky looking guy with all of his teeth missing the only thing he had is, is like a toothpick in his between his lips and uh, anyway he's sitting there drinking a drinking a beer and then the bartender so I went up to the bartender and I and I said I need a, a pitcher of beer and two shots and, and two glasses for and the bartender said, what do you mean two shots and two glasses? I don't, I, why just not use the same glass? I don't want to wash extra dishes. And, and I said, what do you mean wash extra dishes? And, and, and he said, well, you only need one glass. And I, I, I looked back at Danny and I, I was confused. I thought maybe he could somehow see him. Maybe he had bad vision because Danny's still back, you know, by the pool table. And, and I said, man, the guy is a friend of mine. But I don't share a glass with any dude. You know what I mean? And and the guy said, "Dude, another guy. What are you talking about?" And he held his hand over his eyes like he was like trying to 
peer off into the distance with a sun in his eyes type thing. He's peering off, and then he looks towards Danny, and he, he has this shocked look like, oh! And then he looked at me, and and he said, all right, I'll put it you this way. I don't serve pets, and I don't serve people who bring in their unleashed animals. And then I realized what he was saying, and I'm like, oh! So I started to reach forward, and I was going to grab him by the throat, you know, and punch him. And when I started to reach forward, um, I noticed that he was, like, going down. And as I'm reaching, Danny yelled no. And I turned around, and he's got his hands up even higher now, still holding that dime between his thumb and his forefinger. And he's got his hands up in the air. And he said, David, don't touch him. If you hit that guy, he's going to pull out a gun. He's going to kill you. He's going to shoot me in the back as I'm running for the door. Nothing will happen because they'll say we came in here to rob the place. And the guy at the bar is going to tell him that we tried to rob the place. And I looked at the bartender, and then I saw the guy out of the corner of my eyes that was sitting at the bar, and he's nodding with a big, doofy grin on his face. And the bartender, I realized he was reaching under the counter like he was going for a gun. So I kind of held my hands back, and I went, whoa, wait a minute. He said that it was a white bar. I'd never heard of such a thing. I'm from Tennessee. I've never seen something like this. I'm really sorry. You know, just, we're going to leave now. I didn't know. And then Danny said, hey, look, but sorry, guys. Uh, he didn't understand. He had to learn it for himself because he wouldn't believe me. We're leaving now, all right? We're good. We're leaving now. He's still got that dime in his hand. He's walking backwards, hoping that he doesn't get shot or I don't get shot. And so I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and I started to walk away. And I expected almost any second to have him pull it and shoot. But we got outside. We got outside. Man, my heart was racing. And we got, got in the car. And Danny said, well, welcome to Louisiana. That's a white bar. And if that, if telling you this, uh, I was mad, by the way, that, that these guys didn't even know Danny. He was a really good guy. Him and his girlfriend were two of the finest, you know, Americans you could meet. And I've never been one to judge people by the color of their skin. If you're a good person, I don't care if your skin is white or black or brown or yellow or red or all these other stupid colors that we name each other. But nobody's really white, and nobody's really black, and nobody's really brown, nobody's really yellow, nobody's really red. It's just stupid. It's just ways to keep us all even more divided. And there are people who make a lot of money off of doing that, like Al Sharpton and some of these other people. They love division among us because that's how they make their fortunes. The media loves racial disharmony because the news sells, you know? But to me, I've always thought that was asinine. If you don't judge a person by their character and their content, you know, the content of their heart, then you're just a, a moron. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know people that are white that I would not want living near me, right? And and there's black folks that I know that are some of the finest people. I would just as soon have a full neighborhood of them. You know, people that are that are kind and decent. That's what I mean by them. But I'd rather have a neighborhood full of kind and decent people than people that all have my skin color and are, are you know, breaking into homes. You know what I mean? It's like basing, basing what people are like just on their outward appearance. Man, God looks at the heart, you know. So if you claim to be a Christian, you should look at people's hearts too. See what God sees. Get to know them before you make some kind of judgment. But I've got other stories from southern Louisiana when I lived down there. I'm sure it's changed. I hope it's changed. But that's one of them. And uh, if it doesn't get me canceled or banned or shut down or shot, uh, maybe I'll do another one of these and tell you another story that actually actually did happen to me when I lived in southern Louisiana. All because my best friend happened to be black. But anyway, thanks for watching, Motor Warriors. Uh, hope y'all still love me. <laughs> and remember to live your life with the heart of a Viking warrior. Bye for now.